I had an interesting week last week. Um, very, very exciting channel-wise and personally. Uh, and I wanted to share that with you before we get started on this week's video. And that's why this week's video is going to cut off where it does. Because uh, I don't want to make this too long. Um, I had a couple of pretty long videos there. Uh, to start off with, um, the channel finally hit a thousand subscribers. And I can't thank you folks enough. Just incredible. Um, the outpouring of, of encouragement and everything that I've gotten from all of you has just been fantastic. Uh, and going over the thousand subscriber mark uh, is a big deal for YouTube because that means that eventually now the channel can be monetized and I maybe can make a couple of bucks on it. Um, I don't look to ever get rich from what I'm doing with YouTube. My main goal of doing it in the beginning and, and still today is just to share everything I can with you guys, let you see the mistakes that I'm making and the successes that I'm having. Uh, and interact with you guys uh, on a one-to-one -one basis and meet some of the most incredible people in the world in the way in the form of the subscribers that I have for the channel and that was the second part so I think I hit a thousand subscribers on man, it was either Friday night or Saturday evening um, and on on Friday um, one of my subscribers uh, sent me an email and I'll paraphrase the email for you. And it said, hey, Sean, is that a 20-inch chainsaw that you're using to cut all those sticks down with? Um, because my trees are not that big. And I said, yep, that's what I've got. I responded to him. I go, 20-inch chainsaw, it's, I've had it forever. So he goes, man, you got to be killing yourself. And I said, um, not really. You know, you kind of get used to it. I go, but the main thing is that I, you know, you use what you have. And, and that's, well, I've had to buy some different equipment through this whole process. I've, I've tried to use everything that I have as well. Uh, well, he surprised me on Friday by telling me to swing by Alaska Industrial Hardware um, and pick up this 16-inch Husqvarna chainsaw that he actually bought for me. <laughs> he called AIH. He bought the chainsaw for me over the telephone, had it shipped there, and I picked this up on Friday. And I've never fired this thing up, so you guys are going to get to see me fire it up for the first time ever. Um, it, I won't give you his full name, I just want to say right now, John, you are a gentleman and a scholar, among other things, as my father would put it. What an incredible, incredible gesture that was. Uh, but I am going to definitely put this thing to good use. And I really wanted you guys, everybody here, to see me start this for the first time. Uh, and maybe we'll cut down a, a little tree too with it. <laughs> so, I've never used a Husqvarna before. So, we could we could look pretty dumb here trying to get this going but they have directions one two three four five six we'll see what happens but I'm thinking that because you just saw me put the very first oil on the very first fuel in this saw ever that I probably should do a couple of pulls just to get everything moving through there and we're gonna pump the old bulb up Alright, and then we're going to pull the choke out, and then we're going to so let's do this five times. All right, I'm looking like a fool now, huh? There we go. John, again, thank you very, very much. 
I'm gonna go pick a tree and cut it down right now. You guys can watch it and then the chickens can all freak out. They, like I said, they took off running that away. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> There you go, John. Thank you very much, guys. Now let's get on to this week's episode of Sean in Alaska. I'm gonna start the chicken coop. Um, I've actually got most of the framing and stuff done, but I'm gonna show you guys what I'm putting together here. And I'm doing this all with pretty much hand tools. So hope you enjoy. Uh, as always, have a great, great day. And uh, I'll give you an update at the end of the video of what's going on with the potatoes and the chickens and that kind of stuff as well. Thank you.
bird. I stopped off today and picked this piece of plywood up right here. And this is the plans originally that I that I found um, called for a three-quarter inch plywood base, but after looking at the weight of the chickens, how many birds I've got. I, I don't need more than a half an inch, but I needed a solid piece of plywood so that I don't have any seams in there to collect junk and garbage. Um, and I'll go ahead and I'll paint all this over when it's done with a good, you know, a good, like, concrete, heavy, heavy-duty paint that the, the birds won't be able to, to tear up, uh, and it'll keep it easier to clean. This sheet of plywood cost me $99 today, and it's only a half-inch sheet of plywood. I think three-quarter inch is about 125 to 130 now. The end is in sight though I think for wood it looks like the futures are starting to come down on it which means by fall the prices should start to dry, drop we'll see some noticeable drops up here in Alaska but it takes a while for us to see those drops um, the two big 4x4s here I picked up from my buddy Ward uh, he said dude you can have those and the two lower ones here um, and they're actually pressure treated these are six footers uh, picked up from brother Will he said get those out of here I don't need them I've got some 2x4s I've got some extra sheets of plywood for siding, so I think I've got enough lumber to get this thing started and, uh, and to hopefully have it built before the end of this week. This is the first day, and I'm taking measurements now. Uh, basically, the, the plan is going to be on the, on the, say, north side of the hutch. It's going to be the shallow side. So that'll be three feet until the floor, and then another three feet uh, up above that on the inside of the coop. And then on the other side, it'll be three foot to the floor and five feet up um, inside the coop. And that'll give me enough of a slope um, away from, so that'll be the southern side, the tall side, uh, away, enough of a slope to be able to have it uh, lose, lose the snow um, when we get the heavy snowfall this winter. I've got a bunch of two by fours. I'm going to measure all this stuff out uh, and get it all framed up and going. I'm probably going to do it in stages, kind of like I did the um, outhouse. Uh, that way, it's easier for me to move and maneuver. And I'm not going to sink this in concrete. I want this coop to be movable, even if it's going to take a couple of men and a boy to actually move it uh, once it's completely built. Uh, I could level it out that way. And unlike a lot of places that you may live, we get so cold here in the winter that the moisture rot is not as big of an issue as you might think it would be. Um, and these ones with the, that are pressure treated, the six footers here, I'm not that worried about at all. Um, these ones here, I'll probably put a coat of good sealant um, on the outside of them but I don't want to use something super toxic because I don't want the birds picking at it and, and killing it. The entire coop itself will be on the edge of the fence line. So imagine this is the, the fenced in area here. The coop will be here and the fence will run across it and it'll actually be outside of the, uh, of the fenced area. And, and I'm doing that because I'm going to use the underside of the coop to store the grain, different stuff that the chickens are going to need underneath that um, so that I can keep all that stuff outside and, and free up some more room from inside the trailer. Uh, but that's the project I'm working on right now. So I've measured these out to six feet. I got to get two feet more on these. Uh, so these are eight foot, um, and that's going to be eight foot's going to be the height of the highest point in the front, and it's going to be four feet wide by eight feet long on the inside. So that gives me plenty of room to increase the number of birds down the road as well. Uh, original plan was for something that was going to be 10 by 10, and I really see no reason to go that big at all um, unless I'm raising a ton of meat birds which I'm nowhere near gonna be there for a couple of years um, this will get me started uh, actually I could probably do it half this size but this way I've got something to grow into and I've already got everything I need I think to, to build this one so all right we'll start off with a tomato plant here um, start to flower right here and back over here uh, with a lot more flower pods starting to shoot themselves out. So I don't know if I'm going to get tomatoes or not, but this plant's doing very, very well. I haven't had to water much because the last week, week and a half has been a ton of rain. Um, but I had to move it up on top of here because the chickens were paying way too much attention to it. Uh, they just took off running underneath the, the trailer now, so I don't know if they're going to sneak back out again in time for me to get this on the, the video for you this week. Let's take a look at the potato patch. Um, and when I showed you before, um, they had pretty much decimated, uh, the chickens did, had pretty much decimated the whole thing. Uh, they just got in there and started scratching. They just did what chickens do. I can't really blame them. I blame myself for not having it blocked off. Uh, but let's go ahead and show you where we're at now. Um, it's actually doing very, very well. So when I originally put these potatoes in, I went ahead and did three rows. 
Um, they were completely wiped out down at that end. There was nothing left over there from where the chickens had started scratching and going crazy. But as you can see, they're all coming back pretty well. And as a matter of fact, this row here now is starting to show a bit of growth down at that end as well. So I expect this to all fill in before the end of this week. The growth is, is noticeable every single day. It's crazy how fast these things are growing. Um, this section was pretty much left alone by them. So we didn't have an issue with them getting torn up. Um, so that's why these plants look so much further along than the ones down below. I am gonna buy some straw this week and start covering this thing up in straw and we'll let the greens kind of poke their way through that. Um, and then eventually, uh, well, I'll probably leave this on there. It doesn't hurt to leave this on uh, to protect it from the chickens. Uh, speaking of which, they're starting to poke their heads out over there. Hello, ladies. How are you? How are you girls doing? <laughs> uh. They do like to lay in the sun, don't they? Well, hello, girls. Hello. Chicken's running all over the place over here. Hello, girls. Hello. So originally I had only named two of the chickens, um, SJ, Red, um, just because that bird is so freaking pretty it's un unbelievable. And then I had one that had white streaks on the side of its head and it was pretty much just a knucklehead. Um, and I called that one Owen Wilson. <laughs> well, Owen Wilson has vanished. It's been about, uh, I don't know, I want to say a week, a week and a half now. Um, but when I went to let the chickens out of their pen, because I close it up every morning before I go to work, and they kind of do this running around while I'm here all day. Um, when I went to let it out, let them out the next day, they were real skittish about coming out, and I got to think that possibly an aerial predator finally actually got a hold of something, which is why the big push for the chicken coop right now. Well, hello, ladies. So I'm down to 10 chickens, um, and I don't know what happened to Owen Wilson. Don't know where he went. Uh, I, he could have just run off. I couldn't find any sign of, you know, blood or feathers or, or carcass or anything. So I, I don't know exactly what happened. But I do know that the birds didn't want to come out of the, the, the coop or, or the brooder thing that I have for them um, for probably an hour after I opened the top up. And when they came out, they were very, very skittish. They went right underneath the tree. They went, hello. Hello. How are you? But they're doing awesome now. Um, I've got 10 birds. To be honest with you, I really did not. The reason why I ordered 12 to begin with is because I thought I'd be lucky to get six, um, raising them from chicks in the, in the fifth wheel trailer like I did. Uh, but I've got 10 happy, healthy birds right now, and I want to make sure I stay at that number. So um, I, I really pay attention to what's going on with them. I do live in Alaska, and I do live kind of in the wilderness, and we have bears, and we have coyotes, and we have wolves, and we have, um, you know, ermine and mink, and, you know, so weasels and that kind of stuff. Uh, so we have a lot of wildlife here that could take its toll on, on livestock like this. Um, it's just part of living in Alaska. Um, I don't really foresee a problem with bears uh, at this time because the fish are getting ready to hit the river pretty hot and heavy. Uh, they're in there now uh, and the bears are doing a lot of feeding on that. I don't, I don't see a problem with the eagles because they feed out of the river quite a bit as well. I see more of a problem with the, with the aerial predators um, in, the, uh, in the winter months. Uh, when it's a little harder for them to scavenge for food. But by that time, we'll be very well set. Um, like uh, coyotes, we have a lot of dogs around this area, so I don't really see a lot of coyotes or hear a lot of coyotes coming in. And wolves the same way. They're pretty solitary. So there's nothing I could do if those um, predators decided that they wanted to get a hold of the chickens. They could pretty much rip through just about anything that I'm going to set up. Uh, bears especially. If a bear wants the chickens, it's all over. Uh, doesn't matter what I build, the bear will tear it apart. The bear will tear its way into my trailer if it wants to. But I figured I'd let you know that one bird is gone. Uh, so we're down to 10. And, knock on wood, we'll stay at 10. <laughs> huh. Does that work for you guys? Huh, ladies? <laughs> 